When caving in Minecraft, you'll often run into different structures that generate there, so from mineshafts to strongholds, learn everything about underground structures in this guide. Let's start with the most common generated structure underground. In fact, it's not technically a generated structure because of the way it works, but that is the dungeon. Now, there's three different variants of the mob spawners that can be inside of dungeons, so 50% of dungeons are zombie dungeons, where the mobs that generate at this spawner are going to be zombies. Then 25% of mob spawners are skeleton spawners. This, in my opinion, is the most valuable type of mob spawner, and definitely the one you want to be looking out for. As you can notice here too, you can actually have up to two chests in a dungeon, and the chests can even contain enchanted golden apples. And the final 25% of mob spawners are spider mob spawners. This one's definitely the most overlooked in my opinion, for a couple reasons. So the spiders that spawn at this type of mob spawner are completely non venomous, although of course they will bite you and hurt you, they will not actually give you the poison effect, unlike a cave spider would. Now the real question would be, how do you actually find mob spawners if they're somewhat infrequent? Dungeons, which of course contain the coveted mob spawners, will only generate when they're connected to a cave. So you can see right here, this mob spawner of course has an opening into that cave, and if we fly around here for a little bit, you'll see it's the same over here. This mob spawner also is connected into this abandoned mine shaft. There's no dungeons that generate completely floating out here. However, if we do go back into the cave area, here too is another example of a mob spawner, and right here you can see it is intersecting a cave. So basically, mob spawners will only generate if they can be touching some sort of a cave, so that players can likely find them. Sometimes it's really open, like this one right here. Here's another really important thing about finding mob spawners, though. They're actually more common if you're underneath Y0. That's right, even though the mob spawner itself is made out of cobblestone, which is something something that is of course obtained in the higher up layers of a Minecraft world. To find those commonly generated mob spawners, you want to go into the deep slate layer, or basically at Y0 and below. Okay, so we find a mob spawner. How are we not just killed by the mobs here? Here's how you deal with a mob spawner if you find it. It's really simple. So you're exploring around and you find one. The second you find it, place a single torch on top of the spawner here, and then of course kill any mobs that were there already. Now with your axe, simply break the surround chests to get the loot inside of it. This loot is great and has a lot of stuff in it, we'll go through that in just a second. But to start, let's dispel the myth that to make a mob spawner not have mobs, you have to fully surround it in torches and just spam the walls in torches. In fact, this could not be further from the truth. All you need to stop a mob spawner from generating mobs is to place a singular torch on the top of it, at least in Java edition. And then you don't have to worry about it. Some people will break mob spawners, but I would not suggest this. And the reason why is that not only does it hurt me very deeply inside, but as well as that there's the fact that you cannot move mob spawners, you cannot pick them up with silk touch. And so basically they generate there once, and once you've broken them, you're never getting it back. And of course, if you're wondering why you would actually want to save a mob spawner, well, maybe not the spider spawners, but with the skeleton and the zombie spawners, they make for great mob farms. And I actually have a video on how to make a really easy mob farm design. I'll have an eye card on the screen right now for that. So you can build that if you want out of one of these. It's really, really simple. So 80% of the cobblestone at the base of the mob spawner will be mossy cobblestone. This used to be one of the only ways of getting mossy cobblestone, but now because you can craft it, it's not really that worthwhile, but still kind of cool to collect it here and to get some of this old block. But of course, for getting the mossy cobblestone, what is the main loot of the dungeon? Well, dungeons can have a decent amount of loot in them in these chests. There is zero to two chests that generate inside of this small dungeon structure, but it is incredibly rare to have a dungeon with no chests in it. As you can see right here, there's a good variety of loot, with the main things being mob drops, like let's say string or bones or rotten flesh. There's also some food items, like maybe bread or wheat. You can also sometimes find gunpowder inside of mob spawner loot chests. There's quite a bit of treasure you can find as well, so name tags can be found here. Saddles, coal, which can be nice because coal doesn't really generate very much underground. There's also things like horse armor, so like diamond horse armor, iron horse armor, or gold horse armor. Unenchanted or enchanted golden apples, some different seeds, so like beetroot seeds, melon seeds, or pumpkin seeds. Also iron ingots and even just straight up empty buckets, as well as music discs of Other Side 13 or Cat. 
and the occasional enchanted book. So it is definitely worthwhile to loot any dungeons you can find, and of course to especially mark out the coordinates of ones like let's say skeleton spawners to reserve them for farms later. Let's go on to what is although not the most common underground structure, definitely the most commonly found, and that is the abandoned mineshaft. Abandoned mineshafts can look something like this, which is definitely not what they normally look like, or they can more look like long tunnels with supports, something like this tunnel over here. So the big question with abandoned mineshafts would be, how do these structures actually generate? Well, let's take a look at this specific abandoned mineshaft. We have this very large exterior section with these sort of big walkways that are suspended with both chains as well as oak logs. But if we go to the interior part of the abandoned mine shaft, where does this entire thing generate from? Well, it is right here. This is the central room. It is a small empty room with a kind of circular roof to it. You can see that there, it's very arched and very round. And off of that are maybe four to five tunnels. I would generally tend to recommend setting up your mineshaft rating base at the central room, if you can find it fairly easily. And the reason for that is it should be fairly centrally located. Let's go to an area of the mineshaft we've never explored before. And you'll notice here, there's actually a torch that generates up here. That's a naturally generating torch. That's something really important to know about the abandoned mine shaft. Torches are not useful for just seeing where you've been already. Well, they can be depending on how you place them. So what I would recommend is to bring a ton of torches with you to the abandoned mine shaft to make sure the entire thing is spawn proofed, but as well as bringing all those torches to also have some shears. This way you can collect the cobwebs, but sometimes you will run into something that has a bit more than a couple cobwebs. These are actually a specific part of mine shaft generation, and these are basically abandoned corridors that are filled all the way up with cobwebs and having them a cave spider spawner. These are different from normal spiders because cave spiders are poisonous and so because of that these can be really dangerous and it's good to be aware of that. These can really generate anywhere, sometimes I've even seen them generate on big wide open areas like this. But that is not the main loot source of the abandoned mine shaft. instead it is these. These are known as minecart chests, they can include things like diamonds inside them or even just boring stuff like beetroot seeds and rails. There's a bunch of different cool things you can find in here, and it may remind you of what's found in dungeons. Well, to start, you can have any type of rail in here, so activator rails, detector rails, powered rails, or standard rails. Also, just straight up torches can generate in here, which is kind of a funny type of loot, but it makes sense, as of course these are miners' supplies. Then we have name tags, glow berries, bread, golden apples, and coal. And just like the dungeons, beetroot seeds, melon seeds, and pumpkin seeds, I think the idea behind this is if a player is in a somewhat isolated location, by at least mining around instead of exploring, they can still get themselves all those different seed types. Then there are iron ingots, and you can also get the valuables of lapis lazuli, redstone dust, gold, diamonds, or enchanted books, and even just a straight up iron pickaxe, or the incredibly rare and valuable enchanted golden apple. In fact, literally 1.4% of those chest minecarts inside of the abandoned mineshafts can have the enchanted golden apple in them. Mineshafts have not always been the same. In fact, since 1.17, mineshafts have oak log and chain supports if over a gap or in a large cave. And both of these are super valuable if you think about it, because these chains are actually not that cheap. In fact, one chain piece costs more than one iron ingot. So if we were literally just to go around here and break all these chains, that alone is basically more valuable than the loot we'll find in here. And as well as that if you're trying to get some oak wood, well these supports are solid oak wood and they can be very large, like 20 blocks tall for example. If you don't really care about cobwebs by the way, definitely use a water bucket to destroy cobwebs, as cobwebs are instantly destroyed by water and turn into string, and as well as that then you're not wasting your sword durability, it also pushes back spiders, so in these sort of spidery corridors here, it can be a lot safer. Mineshafts can generate anywhere in any biome in Minecraft as long as it's underground, except for one exception. And that is the perilous deep dark biome. And so although sometimes you might see an abandoned mine shaft near a deep dark biome or near let's say an ancient city, they will not start generating inside of the deep dark. Now there is one type of mine shaft that's different from all the rest, and that's a mine shaft that generates in any mesa type biome. You can kind of see the difference already. And that's the fact that these mine shafts are made out of dark oak wood and dark oak materials. So for instance, right here, of course, these are dark oak fences, and these are dark oak planks up here. 
I'm not sure of the exact reason why Mojang decided to have these mine shafts be made out of dark oak wood. One thing that's really nice though is this being dark oak actually extends into those support pillars. So if you find a massive cave that one of these abandoned mine shafts generates into, those supports are all going to be out of dark oak wood. So that's kind of a really weird way that you can get dark oak logs without ever going into a dark forest. Mine shaft is the main way of finding the stronghold with this is to throw an eye of ender and go the direction it says. So if it goes this direction, just keep going that direction for quite a long while. And I did discuss this in more detail in a different video, but more or less keep throwing them and following where it leads. Until eventually what'll happen is it'll go that direction, but then you throw your next eye of ender, and the next eye of ender will actually travel downwards. And once it does, just dig down in a safe fashion by basically going between two different blocks and mining like this. If you're wondering how many strongholds are in a Minecraft world, there are 128 in a Java edition world. However, in Bedrock edition, this number is infinite. Well, basically infinite, of course, as infinite as the Minecraft world is. I'm not really sure the reason why it's a limited number in Java, but what I do know is that these generate in a very strange circular pattern in Java. Here's a chart of that right now. You can see it just as a sort of bullseye shape. However, in Bedrock, they tend to generate underneath villages. So if you're throwing around Eyes of Ender and you happen to get near a village, just dig down from that village and it's very likely you'll find the stronghold from that. Strongholds are meant to look worn down and because of this they can basically be broken by every single underground structure like even caves. And so because of this it's actually not uncommon to find a stronghold in your world by caving around and suddenly seeing some blocks of it. But how do they generate? The entire generation of a stronghold is based around the main staircase, leading us into one of these massive intersection rooms. So what do you do once you find one of these? Find the stronghold and also get the loot out of here. Well you want to start by marking out your exit, so I would suggest making some sort of polished block or something that's just not naturally going to be there, and making it very very obvious where the exit is. Then from that point as you explore around, like let's say this tunnel down here, doesn't lead anywhere. So because of that, we can use a different block like the polished granite to say there's nothing past here. The same over here, this is just a dead end so we can place a block there. There are a couple very valuable things that can be here. For instance, if we go down, you can see there is a library. There's two types of libraries that can generate inside of the stronghold, and there are zero to two library rooms in each stronghold, but I found the average stronghold does tend to have two library rooms in it. If there's not enough room for the big library to spawn, you'll basically just have a library room that's the smaller bottom part and not the big part here as well. This is definitely the best place to get books in all of Minecraft outside of advanced villager trading areas, and so because of that, if you already have a silk touch axe, I would really recommend going through here and getting yourself all these books really simply. These loot chests can have enchanted books in them, standard books as well as paper and maps. So it's always good to look in here because you can find some great stuff, like let's say this enchanted book right here that has power 4, and even some more additional books in here is always nice. So there's two other types of loot chests around here. You'll notice most of this is tons of corridors that go all the different directions or staircases that go down, and there's one type of loot here which is in the altar chest. I don't know why it's called that, but this is called the altar chest. You can find these quite a few different places. Their loot isn't that amazing, very similar to what you would find in let's say a dungeon, but there is one difference, which is there can sometimes be ender pearls that generate in there. There's also one other type of loot chest, and that is in what's called the storage room. I don't know why this is called the storage room, but it's this intersection, and the roof is wood. You go up here to the top, and there's always a singular chest right here. Inside this chest can also be some decent loot, again very similar to what you'd find in a dungeon, but there is one big difference with these altar chests, and that's the fact that you can find the other side music disc in here. You can also find the other side music disc in, of course, other generated structures, but it tends to be very rare, and the best place to find it is for sure the stronghold. Now, if we keep going through here, we can hopefully find the end portal. You'll generally find the end portal fairly quickly, I found. In fact, there it is right there. Now, in this room right here, we have a silverfish spawner. I would almost always suggest to break that, and of course, here's the end portal. There's usually a couple eyes of ender in here already, but if there's not, you need a total of 12. Now once you do find the portal, what I would suggest doing is actually digging yourself a way back. And this marking out of the path might seem kind of redundant, but it really isn't whatsoever, and the reason why is that I've found the stronghold is so maze-like that there's honestly often times I've been raiding it, and I've actually not been able to find the location of that portal again. However, when you are digging out all the blocks inside the stronghold, there is one thing you may run into. And that is the silverfish. 
Now silverfish might seem pretty easy, they're just a small little mob. You can just kind of punch them away and get rid of them. But the thing is, that doesn't really work. 5% of blocks around the stronghold are silverfish egg blocks. That means if you're punching a silverfish, you will anger more silverfish, which will then spawn in more silverfish, which will do more silverfish. You kind of get the idea. Basically, it makes there be a chain reaction of eventually, like you can see right here. There is a ton of silverfish. What you need to do is get them with fire. So just place down some fire with flint and steel. Thankfully, all the silverfish in trying to chase after you will go right through that fire and will burn to death. And the stronghold used to be for sure the best thing you could find underground. But now since Minecraft 1.19, that answer might be just a little bit different. Ancient cities. I'm not going to go into ancient cities too much. In fact, I have a bunch of different videos on these and I would suggest to check them out. All of what I occurred on the screen right now. But we will have a brief overview of the structure as of course it is a very important underground piece of generation. Number one, in terms of finding ancient cities, they generate underneath mountain biomes and mountain biomes only. There is one exception to this and that is mesa biomes can sometimes have ancient cities underneath them. Of course, deep dark can generate underneath any area of low erosion, but the ancient cities can only generate underneath literal mountain biomes. Once you find one of these, how do you raid them? There are a couple things you need, and they're basically your main tools and wool. And they'll come up to these chests occasionally, simply break them with the chest and run. Now, of course, that's not always the best idea, as right there we actually had a shrieker. But what you want to do generally, if you want to actually raid these without Without having the shriekers be set off is surround the chest in wool and also surround any nearby shriekers in wool. Once the shriekers are surrounded in four sides by wool, they're basically going to be safe enough to break with the hoe. You can see right there we just broke those, nothing else was set off. Once you've broken all the nearby shriekers or just surrounded the chests in wool, break the chest with your axe to get the loot inside of it. These chests can have a ton of really good loot in them, but again be aware because if you set off those shriekers too many times in a row, you will have a warden that summons in. There's also a ton of wool that generates along these pathways here. You can break these blocks to grab that wool and use that wool to also go around safely. If you're crouching, you will not set off the sensors, but generally there's lots of good things here like swift sneak boots as well as pieces of the five disc, echo shards, and other non-exclusive loot such as a ton of enchanted golden apples. But there's a couple other types of loot you should know about. The first one is in this generation right here we have the skeleton skull. There's also skeleton skulls that are sometimes on pillars around here. Those are of course really valuable, you want to grab them. The thing is too is to collect the candles that are around here, but be aware of a warden because this thing is insanely deadly. You can actually find ruined portals underground, but there are two other things that exclusively generate underground. The first one is the amethyst geode. 95% of amethyst geodes generate with a big crack in them, and 5% are complete. They're in different sizes, and in them there's these amethyst clusters, and you can break them into amethyst shards. The cracked amethyst blocks here are really important to not break. They function like a spawner. If you break them, they disappear forever. And as well as that, there's no way of moving them and there's no way of getting them in survival. And so because of that, the best idea here is to expose as many sides as possible of these amethyst bud blocks. And then from there to come here occasionally, breaking those amethyst clusters when they're fully grown to get the amethyst shards. They generate fairly frequently across the Minecraft world at Y30 and below. I hope you enjoyed this cave structures video. If you did, make sure to press the like button, subscribe to see more content like this, and check out the rest of my Minecraft tutorials. I'll see you in the next one, and have a great day. Goodbye!